Hello world of YouTube and welcome to the listening log update for January of 2023. I've got six releases that I'll be talking about that are new that I spawned over the last month. I've got five albums and one EP up for discussion. I've got a request that was already proposed that I'm knocking out as well. Uh, January is always a weird month. There's always kind of just a hodgepodge of who's going to listen, who's going to drop what, and what's going to be worth talking about. And uh, that's all this is going to be. Time code's in the description. Let's go ahead and get started. Indie rock and twee pop veterans Bell and Sebastian dropped a new album this year. And since January is always kind of a scattershot month, I figured why not? Give the new Bell and Sebastian a chance. I like If You're Feeling Sinister, among a few other songs that I may have heard and didn't realize it was them. I'll admit, I'm not a colossal Bell and Sebastian fan, but I do like what I've heard. And I do think that out of any veteran in the scene, they could still pull together a pretty amicable record. And on late developers, they don't necessarily fumble the bag. They just definitely show that they are a much older band in a way that like helps in some regards you know tracks like give a little time and when we were very young show this sort of aged reflection on themselves and their life as it were i also enjoy the some of the songwriting on a track like when the cynics stare back from the wall i also think that above all else this album still sounds pretty nice uh, the production on this thing is very well put together. I think that a lot of the nuance in the band as a whole is still felt in a way that, again, I was kind of hoping it would, given, again, they're kind of a veteran in the scene who even early on kind of knew what made their sound work. You know, while I think tracks like the opener, opener Juliet Naked and the Evening Star are kind of their own shade of bland, the melody work in there is still really nice. I do think that when they kick up the energy on Give It A Little Time and So In The Moment, it kind of fits nicely in the track listing. And the key work on Do You Follow is pretty damn fun. This album is just weak. Its components are the more dull songs or dull moments that I already mentioned or a track like when I t Will I Tell You A Secret, which also just kind of feels like a carbon copy of a sound or a song that's kind of been written in the genre a thousand times over. I will say once the opener kind of comes in and you get one last burst of fun accompaniment, it feels like a nice moment for the album to end, so it doesn't feel like it really overstays its welcome. I don't know, this album is just comfortably okay. It doesn't feel complacent, it just kind of feels well-defined in its lane. And I can appreciate that to some degree. Is this thing going to be on any sort of list of mine anytime soon? No, but for what it is, it does its thing well enough and then it gets out. It's getting a 6 out of 10 for being amicably average. You know, the last time I listened to an Iggy Pop record, it was that post-pop depression album, which had Josh Homme and some of the Arctic Monkeys working with Iggy to make a pretty solid album. And on this new album, Every Loser, it feels like he's trying to tap into a similar energy by working with Chad Smith and Duff McKagan on a lot of this for the, for the musical components, with Travis Scott coming in for at least one jam, while Watt produces the album and, by and large, makes it sound far worse than that post-pop depression album. While I also take issue with some of the songwriting on tracks like Neopunk and Modern Day Ripoff, I feel like this album's biggest detractor is how it sounds. You know, I like a decent amount of the guitar work on here. I think that Frenzy and Modern Day Ripoff and All the Way Down to the Regency have some good guitar work and the production doesn't neuter it. You know, I kind of wish the bass popped a little more. The bass had a little more of a pocket to resonate in, especially given Duff isn't a bad bassist and I would like to hear him a bit more on here. But the drum production on this thing is the same obnoxiousness that riddled a lot of Watt's work that I've heard him on. It doesn't even sound like like good modern aggressive punk drums you know they have the same kind of obnoxious punch punchiness that like the last couple of blink albums had and on the track neo punk it honestly kind of feels like a new blink 182 song with iggy pop 
fronting in and that's not a good thing and a lot of that production also kind of neuters some of the softer moments you know the guitars on new atlantis and morning show sound a little weird you know they don't they don't fit the mood all that well you know i kind of wish that more tracks honestly sounded like a lot of the highlights or that the softer moments kind of sounded like strung out johnny with its kind of early 90s grunge alternative side uh to the guitar production but the production is what sets this album back by and large sure i don't like some of the songwriting but i think frenzy kind of feels like a good sort of look at your younger self in a more you know hindsight sort of way i think strung out johnny is a good sort of taking the piss on an aspect of that was definitely a big part of iggy pop's life you know even a track like comments where the bass actually does get to dance in beautiful splendor i love the bass and drum relationship on that track sees iggy harnessing some real modern bleakness in a decent facet when looking at technology and the separation one can feel from another person and how lonely it could really and, and dark it can really feel i don't know there's components of this i like i just kind of wish it was produced a lot better i kind of wish that there was more uh positives i could say about how it sounds production wise because the band and artist that iggy works with on this bring together a pretty decent batch of tracks and again, when Iggy's writing shines, it does a good job. I just wish it sounded better. You know, it's getting a 5 out of 10. You know, it, it's it's got some components that I enjoy. The collaborations here, I feel like, are pretty amicably handled. I just kind of wish it sounded better, personally. Damn. If the party not lit, then I'd rather not go. If she feeling hot, then I make that bitch frozen. I get a bitch tired every time that I post. And because January was so light, I decided to dip back into the realms of EPs by talking about one of the rising stars out of New York, Ice Spice, who blew up last year off a couple singles and some other tracks on TikTok that did gain some traction outside of those singles. And she pulled more tracks together and culminated it into this EP called Light, where she basically takes what made those songs good and morphs them into a couple of other pretty decent songs whether it's more club inspired banger tracks like in my mood or princess diana or throwing a little more guitar sampling in there like in gangsta boo well having her own soft driven sort of lower key banger in the form of act and a smoochie and really my biggest issue with this is that while there are six tracks here there are other songs she had recorded and, and gotten some notoriety that aren't even on here that I felt like could have enhanced some of the atmosphere on here and given some of the uh, more confident filled lyrics a little more of an other side of the coin. You know, for as much as I like her really putting herself out there and going bold and knowing what she has, like on In Her Mood and on Munch, which was a colossal jam, while also putting up this personality of this passive non-caring nature like on uh bikini bottom that talks about not caring how what others have to say because she knows she's already going to get them fired up anytime she drops a post i kind of just wish that there was a bit more to this you know i love her cold delivery i think that the beats that she's chosen are well done or at least well chosen and fit the vibe she wants to put out there very well you know a lot of people were ragging on bikini bottom i kind of like bikini bottom i'm not gonna lie i think that the hook very embodies a lot of what makes Ice Spice captivating as far as listening to her stuff. She's got this very loose style to her delivery that I think gives it this fun, fresh feel. You know, and again, I think the low-key delivery also really works in her favor. I just kind of want more from this. Like, it's a good proof of concept. It's good as far as an EP goes, as far as delivering a proof of concept. But I feel like she could have gone even bolder and gone even farther sooner by just pulling together a couple more tracks and rounding it out to make it a full album. I also feel like the hooks outside of the songs she's put out as singles aren't as strong as the singles and give more like an album cut feel that makes them feel even more lackluster given it's on the presence of something like an EP. You know, I like the thudding boom on Princess Diana and I think her verse work on there has the same strengths and talks about her feeling like Princess Diana. But again, it just doesn't have the same strengths that the other tracks do that I like more than it. I know she talks about on here having stuff on the way and just making people wait, but damn, if I... I'm already just kind of curious to see what does come of this because I already liked the proof of concept. I liked the songs that I heard and I had already wanted to hear more from her than what she was planning to give, but having the finished product here, it does leave me like wanting 
so much more. But in its state, it's fine. I just want more. I'm giving it a six, it's really not bad. Uh, but I am curious to see how she grows from this and rounds it out into a full-length album. Actually, speaking of TikTok success stories, Italian rock band Maniskin took their success from their cover of Beggin and became Eurovision winners, which this album, Rush, is the fruits of that victory. It is a well-produced album to put this band into more people's ears, to the fact that it has more English lyrics to play up their rock and roll aesthetic. An aesthetic that feels all the more tired and played out throughout this album's runtime. Like even when they're pulling together a rage of like cool kids, it feels like a facade because a lot of this album is trying so hard to be a cool rock and roll man in a rock and roll band. You know, tracks like Gasoline and Mamma Mia may have some good bass work and the and the groove on Mamma Mia as a whole is is pretty solid. I like that Tom Morello gets to come in and add some guitar on Gossip, another one of the few outlying okay tracks on the on this album. Like even the ballads, if not for you and Time Zone, sound like exactly the same. The chord progressions sound like just slightly shifted from each other the vocal melodies sound almost carbon copy and that doesn't do much to make this feel like anything more than just like a shallow ass pool of music tracks like blah 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 also enhance that feeling of just monotonous blandness you know the track itself is so underwritten and it feels purposely so but not to serve as much of anything. I don't know, this feels like the kind of album that would be dropped post a big success on a television talent show. It just feels like all filler, less killer, and not an album that I would say is worth your time, by and large. It's getting a two out of 10. The, drowning God. My word. the 12th outing by Swedish metal band Catatonia's Sky Void of Stars was a request by Rock and Movies with Tyler. And the name Catatonia is something I've heard passed around in circles, but I'll be honest, they're not a band I've really listened to before. And I'll also go and say, and I'll also go ahead and say that this first outing of their, of mine to, and I'll be honest, I don't think that this new album was really a good gateway for at least me personally, because I thought this album was kind of dull. Uh, sure, it's got moments of brightness in the form of like austerity and author where they kind of throw in some polyrhythms that may sound a little stock, but they at least spice up what is a pretty boring album by and large, in my opinion. Um, I think the biggest kneecap for this album is its production. A lot of the production on here reminds me of the production from Ghost's latest album, Impera. You know, the guitars all feel really washed out by the reverb and a lot of the riffage that it feels like they're trying to focus on with like the swagger tinged colossal shade or the leads on like Drab Moon and on tracks like Sclera and Atrium. But even those tracks, the guitars get buried by the drums once they come in because the drum production on this album is like the worst kind of drum production. Sure, it's punchy, but it's got so much reverb. It just kind of also coats the mix in this sort of drab ambiguity. I don't know. I really didn't like a lot of this album sonically. I thought that it was really held back by some of its production ideas. And the lyric sheet doesn't really do much to sort of excite the listener in, in most regards either, in my opinion. You know, I think that the reflection on birds feels pretty earnest. And there's like this follow through on like thriving in the darkness that gets kind of planted on author and is sort of re-enhanced to be sort of uplifting on no beacon to illuminate our fall. But I just, I don't think that a lot of that comes across all that unified. You know, I think that while the band is definitely throttling in like a dark realm, they don't do much to capitalize on it as far as like really captivating songs, in my opinion. I don't know. This thing was kind of a chore to sit through, and a lot of re-listens didn't give me much to pull from personally. This isn't a style that I typically wholeheartedly always jive with, and this is just an instance where I feel like a lot of it just
just kind of feels a little played out and doesn't add a whole lot to the proverbial table or discussion, in my opinion. It sounds like the 12th album from a band that's been doing it since 1991 is, is all I'll say. I'm giving this a four. It's not like the worst thing I've ever heard, but it definitely isn't my bag at all, man. I'm sorry. Seminole. To anybody who wants to shame Lil Yachty for branching out and really go bold on Let's Start Here, really don't care about artist experimentation because I have never been in Yachty's corner. I've never been a staunch defender of his work. In fact, I've had friends who have, and I've shut that shit down because I'd never really liked Yachty's work. In fact, I put Let's Start Here on my listening log because, again, January is slow, and I've covered Yachty in the past. I listened to Poland, and I thought it was fine. I wasn't, like, gassed up for this record. But damn if Yachty exceeded my relatively low expectations by, like, several country miles. This psych rock experimentation is something that doesn't feel completely obtuse for Yachty. Yeah, sure, the more prog influence stuff may sound a little wild. I mean, hell, the opener Black Seminole sounds like a Chiron Earsay offcut. Sounds like a scrapped Kyron Earsay jam, but honestly, I'm here for it. I like seeing artists break from their own traditionally placed mold and branch out into something that either feels tangential to where maybe some of the roots come from, or just go into a genre that, again, feels not off base for the artist. You know, Yachty doing psych-inspired stuff kind of makes sense. His Auto-tune heavy style has already evolved into that realm a la what like Travis Scott does. But to go even more EVS2 more or even bolder than that, again, embracing sounds that I feel like a band like Kyron Earsay would do into this grand odyssey was really exciting for me to hear. And I'll be honest, this is the best thing I've heard all month. I love the funk on Running Out of Time. I think it bleeds really well into the duet with Fushi pretty amicably well. I think the ride and the zone have some pretty solid unified hooks that tie together those tracks really well. I think the scale on tracks like We Saw the Sun, I've Officially Lost Vision, and Reach the sun so Sunshine are colossal and well harnessed by the people that uh, that Yachty's working with on here. I also think that the artist he chose to work with on here is a really good collection of creative minds. You know, Magdalena Bay, members of MGMT, Alex G. You know, while I'm not the biggest fan of, like, Mac DeMarco, I feel like putting him on the track where he talks more about... Fi I think putting him on the low-key track that's more uh, spoken word, interlude that kind of unifies Yachty's inspiration to push into a different lane was a smart move. I think The Alchemist utilizes Yachty's vocal style to a good effect as well, to have this bold, upfront, not necessarily aggressive, but dense drum work with Yachty on top of it is a really good move. I don't know, I, I like this album a decent amount. You know, parts of it have grown on me, uh, since I started spinning it, but it's an album that I just can't seem to put down. And I mean to say that as somebody who is happy to see somebody like Yachty really push into a new realm. Yachty could have easily fizzled out once the trends that he had sort of helped burgeon continued to sort of branch off into other genres. You know, he talks about failure, especially recent failures on here, but I like that he decided to take that and go somewhere with it that I think is far more compelling than anything he's ever done in the past. Sure, I don't love every song here. I don't like the featured verse on the ride. I feel like Say Something is one of the few sort of average cuts on here that doesn't have all that much of an interesting evolution across it. And while I like the groove of Should I Be, it's one of the few instances where I feel like Yachty is easily the weakest component of it in a detractory sense. But as a whole, this album is nice. I want to see Yachty do more of this. I want to see him experiment with this sound. I want to see him go more bold with it. You know, I think that this is a good introduction into a, a new sonic realm for Yachty, and I hope that he embraces it full stop from, from this point forward. And I'm giving this an 8 out of 10. 
I really enjoyed my experience with this. There's a couple tracks I don't really like as much as others, but I don't think there's an outright L on this album in the way that Yachty's albums are definitely filled with some L's. This is truly one of the biggest surprises I've heard in a minute and a great signifier for some of the hoping, for what I'm hoping are other bold experimentations to come from artists this year. And that's what I listened to in January that was new. Is there anything I li didn't listen to that you did? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this if you like this listening log update, give it a like. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. I drop four vids a week around the realms of music, gaming, and general notary content, and I'd love to have you around here. I'm going to go, though. Thank you again so very much for watching. I've been Viral Rack. You guys have good days, lives, and situations, and I'll see you another day.